Hi, my name is Julie Shea. I'm a bioinformatician at the Canadian Food Inspection Agency in Ottawa, Canada, and I'm going to talk about my poster entitled Bait Capture Metagenomics for Detection of Antimicrobial Resistance Genes and Plasmid Markers in Livestock and Amok Community. Bait capture is a method to enrich sequences of interest from a metagenomic sequencing library before sequencing. So we ordered baits from Arbor Bioscience to target 4009 AMR genes from the NCBI AMR gene database and 266 plasmid markers from the plasmid finder database. So this is the bioinformatics pipeline we developed for target detection. Basically, we align reads to the targets with BWA mem, and then we group the results based on CD hit clustering, but you could also additionally group the results uh, based on characteristics like plasmid replicons or AMR class. So for now, uh, this pipeline is being shared internally with collaborators on a larger AMR GRDI research project via Galaxy. Uh, but the plan is to share the pipeline publicly. We also tested different AMR detection tools for shotgun data. This figure shows an example of the limit of detection for the AMR gene CMY2. We produced a series of mock metagenomes with varying relative abundances of a salmonella containing the CMY2 gene. And we ran different AMR detection tools on these data sets. So to detect your gene of interest reliably, you need it to have relatively high coverage in your metagenome. And depending on the tool you use and the cutoff you use for detection, you do have the potential for off-target hits. To test our bait capture system, we made an in vitro mock community where we combined DNA from 35 different bacterial strains. So we perform shotgun and bait capture metagenomic sequencing on this community. Uh, we also made an in silico version of the same community using art. So this table is showing the recall of true positive clusters at different cutoffs. So the cutoffs we used are based on gene coverage. So um, that means there's coverage across 70, 80, or 90% of the length of the gene. So since AMR genes can have highly similar sequencing, lower cutoffs increase the risk of false positive hits to different but similar AMR genes. Uh, so with the beta data set, our recall remains high even with the higher 90% coverage cutoff. So that's the cutoff we proceeded with for the rest of our analyses. On the left here, you see that when we do in silico subsampling experiments, recall of true positive targets remains high in the bait capture data set, even with a depth of 1.25 million reads. This suggests that the bait capture sequencing may allow for more samples to be screened for the presence of target genes at a lower cost. However, there is a catch. Uh, so the figure on the right shows the results for the same data sets um, using an adapted version of the AMR++ pipeline, which uses a different database. So as you can see, uh, bait capture doesn't perform nearly as well for this database as it does for the targets. So bait capture is great for detecting targets, but not great for detecting other genes. We also perform bait capture and shotgun sequencing on 36 livestock samples from three different species. So this table is showing the total number of reads uh, aligned to AMR targets from each sample type. And you can see that for the same samples, a much higher percentage of total sequenced reads align to AMR targets with baiting than with shotgun. So the baiting is working. These Venn diagrams are just examples for a few of the samples we've sequenced. In every single sample, more target clusters were detected with bait capture versus shotgun sequencing. The additional clusters detected by bait capture come from a variety of AMR classes. In most samples, every single cluster that was detected by shotgun was also detected via bait capture. For a few samples, there was a maximum of one cluster that was detected in shotgun data, uh, but not bait capture. So I currently only have access to a subset of my data 
uh, because I am forced to work from home. But hopefully by the time you're hearing this, I will have been able to go to my office um, so I can provide more information about the samples that aren't shown here. So in conclusion, the bait capture approach can detect greater AMR gene diversity compared to shotgun sequencing. Uh, bait capture may be less sensitive for detecting genes um, that aren't in the target data sets. And a higher gene coverage cutoff can be used with bait capture sequencing, which allows for distinguishing between alleles within an AMR gene family. Okay, thank you for checking out my poster, and I look forward to hearing from you in the Q&A.